We all, as humans, care about how we're perceived. And we work in a society where it values a certain type of resume, a certain type of profession, or a certain type of status, whether it's social or material or financial. And those things all affect us. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't affect me and all the people I know, too. I think it's really important, though, when you jump to try to put that to the backdrop and find the people that are going to support your jump and that have done it. Find the people that are doing it right now. And then find the people that wanted to take a jump but didn't and ask them how they feel about not jumping. Because I think the decision not to go do what you want to do in life is much more terrifying than actually taking the step forward and going for it. When to Jump is a global curated community that features the ideas and stories and people all relating to this concept of when to go do what you love. I was in a corporate job. I worked at a global private equity and venture capital firm. And I would go to work every day and try to drown out this little voice in my head. And this voice spoke about an idea that I had as a little kid. And so growing up, I discovered the racket sport called squash. When I discovered the sport, I also learned that there was a professional squash tour. And just so happened that the tour passed through our little town and our family hosted a traveling player. And I remember stories of him playing on mountains in Brazil and traveling through cities in Asia and towns along the Pacific. And I thought, you know, someday I want to go do that. Fast forward back to my job. On paper, everything made sense. It felt like I'd won the lottery. I felt very lucky to have gone through high school and college, and I was on that track. But what I thought about was, and what really scared me was, well, what if that track isn't for you? What if you want to do something else? Is it possible to leave? Is it possible to pivot and change? Why don't I look for other people who may have left something comfortable to go off their path, whatever that path may be? I wanted to know what was on that inside. What were those 10,000 unsexy steps that come after you decide to chase your dream and before it actually happens? And soon enough, I was uncovering stories left and right. Whether it was the bartender down the street or the receptionist in the first floor lobby, everyone had something they wanted to do. An electrician who wanted to become a teacher, a teacher who wanted to become a baker, a consultant who wanted to open a nonprofit. And I realized then that yes, my jump was unique, but it wasn't the only type of jump you can make. You can leave your job and go to a new job. You can leave your job and go to a different job within the same company. You know, that's where it occurred to me that there should be a place where I can put these stories and reference them. And so slowly I started to do a few things. I collected the stories for inspiration, but I actually joined the tour part-time. I became the last ranked squash player in the world and started competing on nights and weekends. I would take sick days from work and I would go try to play matches. And in the first match that I ever played professionally, I didn't score a point in the first game. And I think that's, in a weird way, how it started. That was the bottom. And from there, I started to train even more. Nights and weekends, on my own, changed my diet, upped my training, found experts, and I also started to pitch sponsors. I needed someone to say, you know what, this is possible. I'm gonna back you in this. And so I think the first sponsorship came in for not a whole lot. And that was 18 months before I actually left and packed my life up into a suitcase and moved around the world. But that's what I needed. When that started to happen, a jump had begun. There's a difference between crazy and stupid. And what I'd planned and spent 18 months preparing for, with budgets and spreadsheets and training, it created a plan that was crazy for sure, but it wasn't stupid. And so armed with that confidence and with that jump preparation, I said goodbye. It was just another Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever day it was when I walked out of the office. And when I walked into that plane and had a one-way ticket to New Zealand a few days later, I think that's when it felt liberating because that's when I knew this is exactly where I should be. For the next 16 or 18 months, I spent almost every night with other people. That path of facing that uncomfortable feeling, the unknown, and then dealing with it and moving on again. And I think that type of traveling and that type of feeling scared gets you really good about knowing what's gonna come. And you might not still be okay with it, but you know it's gonna come. That's how you build your character. And anybody can do that. And you don't get that type of fear if you stay within what you know. And so by taking that risk to play squash, 
it set forth the next jump. I knew it wasn't just me that was going through this question of when to take that leap and when to pursue something that I cared about. And so I told myself when I came back, I'm gonna work as hard as I can to get this off the ground. I was on my buddy's couch. I was down to my last few weeks of funds. I needed to get a job. I was interviewing at different companies and I had a crumpled set of stories in my backpack. And I got invited to a dinner party where there was a well-known keynote that would be speaking. And I ended up sitting next to a woman before it started. And the woman said to me, well, what's your story? And I probably should have said, well, I'm thinking about getting a new job. I just played squash. Do you know anyone who can hire me? And instead I said, you know, I'm building a community and it's gonna start with a book, but we're gonna create a stage for people to go and share their ideas and stories and connect with other people and figure out when to go do what they love. And it's called When to Jump. Of course, I wasn't exactly at that point of forming the community, but that was my vision. And the woman turns to me and said, oh, that's great. Well, let me know, I, you know, I'd love to be helpful. My company helps out a lot with video. We were, we're really good with digital media. I thought, great, you know, once we get going, I get some traction, I'll definitely let you know. She said, all right, please do, and, and here's my card. And I looked down at the card, and the woman I'd been speaking to was Ariana Huffington. And she was the head of the Huff Post, and shortly thereafter, I was in the Huff Post offices in New York, pitching my story to their executives. And soon after that, we launched a media partnership where we could tell stories by video and launch them into the world. And really quickly, we were able to reach several million people. And from there, stories started to pile up and people reached out to When to Jump as a way to tell their story. And from that moment, I felt like this was possible. It was never something that could have happened if I left my job in finance and walked out the door to start this community. But I think that's the whole point, is that sometimes in life, one experience has to happen for the next one to follow, for the next one to follow it. And I think you can always take something from something that happens and apply it towards something very different. You should go do what you love, but you should know that A, it's gonna be worth doing, but B, it's gonna be really hard. And C, if you put yourself in the right position with all that hard work, then you're gonna run into your luck, and that's where you'll find it. It starts with thinking about what do you see yourself doing in 10 years, in one year, in six months? What does a day look like? It doesn't matter how much money you have, where you live, what you look like. If you put in the time, you can take a jump. Oftentimes you can feel really alone. And I remember there would be days on my buddy's couch when I would wonder, you know, why am I doing this? Why is this important? And there are days like that even today where you wake up and you have a lot of emails to respond to and you feel like you're not pushing forward and you're standing in place and you kind of think, gosh, it'd be kind of easy if I stayed doing what I was doing. You almost want that secure, reliable kind of safety net. And I think what I keep going back to is that we're making a real difference. People are taking in our stories and ideas and sharing theirs, and these ripples of impact are being made. But I'd be lying if I said it's all been easy. Most days I wake up scared and, and fearful of what I haven't done, but it's important to just push past it and just show up and take one day at a time and, and have reminders of why you're doing what you're doing. So even in the darkest moments and feeling really alone and feeling like I've failed in some way, I have a box of memories and notes that remind me of, you know, this is, this is my path and there's a reason I'm going forward. My name is Mike Lewis and I'm the founder and CEO of When to Jump. It's a perfect day for the road The blue sky will take us home